Hey there, everybody. Uh, we're going to start a new series of topics on geometry. Um, and the first thing that we're going to work with uh, with geometry here is the concept of perimeter. Now, if you look at the word perimeter, uh, it's really two words, P-E-R-I or peri and meter. Peri is a word that shows up in other places. One place where you may have uh, seen the prefix peri is a periscope. Uh, periscope is one of those uh, mirrors in a tube that allows you to look out of a submarine. Uh, and the reason it's called a periscope is because when you look, you look around. You stick it up out of the water and you can look all the way around. Peri in general means around. And meter, uh, as we've seen in other places, is a unit of length or to measure. And so perimeter or perimeter means to around measure or measure around. Um, and that's why perimeter is defined as the uh, total distance all the way around the outside of a shape. So um, as long as those edges of a shape are straight, then that's pretty easy. So let's look at one case like that. So uh, to find the perimeter, we just need to choose a starting point. We'll start right up here. Uh, our top edge is one and a half inches. Our right edge is six and a quarter. We're going to add all these up, and we're going to do this using fractions. So our perimeter is going to be one and a half plus six and a quarter plus six and three eighths, one and seven eighths, and four and three sixteenths. And that gets us all the way around the outer edge. Those are all in inches, although I'll just label our final answer. Um, so let's add those up. A little refresher on adding fractions. What do we got to do before we can add these together? Yeah, we need a common denominator. And so our LCD here is going to be sixteenths of an inch. Okay, so one and one half, that's one and eight sixteenths. Six and a quarter is six and four sixteenths. Six and three eighths, so multiply top and bottom by two, that's six and six sixteenths. 1 and 7 eighths, that's 1 and top and bottom by 2, 14 sixteenths. And 4 and 3 sixteenths, we don't need to change that one at all. So we can add up the whole numbers, 1 plus 6 plus 6 plus 1 plus 4. If we add all those together, we get 18. And if we add up all of our parts or our numerators, 8 plus 4 plus 6 plus 14 plus 3, we get 35. Sixteenths. Now, 35 sixteenths, that's obviously very improper. Uh, 35 sixteenths, 16 goes into 35 two times with 3 left over. And so we can take those two and add them to the 18 that we already had and call this 20 and 3 sixteenths. And that is our perimeter. We're more interested in things that are round, and so we want to talk about circumference. Circumference is the perimeter of a circle. Okay, so it's true no matter how big a circle is that the distance all the way around the circle or the distance that circle will roll as shown in this little animation is always a little bit more than three times its diameter. And that's for a small circle or a big circle. And in fact, it's about 3.14 times its diameter. So if the distance all the way around is always 3.14 times its diameter, that means we can take the diameter, the distance across our circle, and multiply it by 3.14, better yet, 3.1416, also known as pi, and that will give us our circumference. So a couple things here. One, you've always learned that uh, pi is 3.14. We're going to use 3.1416 for our calculations because uh, two extra digits gets us a lot more accuracy. And also, if you have a calculator with a pi button on it, your answers will be uh, very close to what we get if we use 3.1416. So you can use a pi button or 3.1416. When you're doing the practice problems for this section um, in your book, you'll get answers a little bit bigger than those given in the back because your textbook only uses 3.14. Um, so our answers will typically a little be a little bit higher than that. And that's a good thing. But very important formula here. You can write this on your uh, conversion sheet. Circumference is equal to pi times diameter. Um, we're going to use that a lot, uh, a lot. So let's look at some examples. Okay, so original tires on this truck were 29 and a quarter inches tall. Uh, we took them off and put on some aftermarket uh, rims and tires. They're 31 and a half inches tall. So the difference is how much farther are we going to travel every time those wheels turn just because we put on bigger tires. 
Well, let's take a look here. Our original tires were a little bit smaller. They were 29 and a quarter or 29.25 inches in diameter. Diameter distance all the way across. So to find the circumference of those, we can say that C for our circumference is equal to pi times our diameter, or in this case, uh, that means 3.1416 times 29.25. If we round that off to two decimal places, uh, and you should do this on your calculator as well, you should get 91.89 inches. That's the distance all the way around that wheel, and that's how far it will travel every time it turns. Now for our aftermarkets, uh, we still have C is equal to pi times our diameter. And so our circumference for the larger wheel is going to be 3.1416 times that larger diameter of 31 and a half inches. And if you do that on your calculator, you get 98.96. And there's our circumference of our uh, aftermarket wheel. Now, the question was, how much further will the wheels travel each time they turn? Um, it's going to be the difference here. This one will travel 98.96 inches every time it makes a complete turn. This one will only travel 91.89. So 98.96 minus 91.89. And that leaves us with a difference of 7.07 .07 inches farther. Now that doesn't seem like much, but these wheels are turning a few hundred, um, maybe a little over a thousand RPM, and those seven inches add up to a few miles per hour off on your speedometer. That leads us to another kind of handy formula that you can put on your formula sheet. Um, you can calculate the speed that a vehicle is traveling if you know the circumference of the wheels uh, that it's using. So speed is equal to circumference uh, as long as it's in inches times your rpm of the wheel divided by 1056. so let's figure out how fast this motorcycle is traveling uh, if its tires are turning at 850 rpm well the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out the circumference of those wheels so our circumference is pi times the diameter and in this case that's going to be 3.1416 times 22 inches. And so the distance all the way around the front wheel on that motorcycle is 69.12 inches. So that's how far that motorcycle will travel every time the wheels turn. Now we can use our formula. Our speed in miles per hour is going to be our circumference of 69.12 inches times the RPM, which we're told are 850 divided by 1056. And that's a pretty straightforward uh, calculation on your calculator. Turns out to be about 55.6 miles per hour. Okay, um, when cable gets wound up on a spool like it does on this uh, electric winch, it wraps it around and around, and every time it wraps around, it's making a circumference. Now, of course, as that cable winds over itself, uh, the circumference gets a little bit longer, but not by very much. So the question is, how much cable will this winch hold if uh, the cable winds up on a radius, that's the distance from the edge to the center of the circle, of two and a quarter inches, if it winds around 30 times? Well, let's start by finding the circumference, that is to say how far it is around uh, one loop around the spool. Our circumference is pi times the diameter, and so that means our circumference is 3.1416 times the diameter. Now, if our radius is two and a quarter, then that means that we should double that to get the diameter. Two and a quarter plus two and a quarter is four and a half, so our diameter is 4.5 inches. And that means that the circumference of this spool is 14.137 inches. That's per loop. But we're told that we're going to wind it around 30 times. And so if we multiply that by 30, we get the total length of the cable. And that turns out to be about 424.1 inches. 
Now, it'd be kind of useful to know how many feet that is. So a little review of our unit conversion. Um, let's put that over one and we'll trade in 12 inches for every foot. That'll make our units cancel off. And that means we're going to take 424.1 and divide it by 12. That leaves us with 35.3 feet. So about 35 feet of cable on that winch, and we've answered the question. Okay, for our last couple of examples, we want to look at uh, figures that are um, not complete circles, uh, but don't have completely straight edges either. They're kind of composite figures, and so let's do this one. Let's figure out the perimeter of this shape. We're told uh, that it's 2.85 feet from bottom to top. Okay, well, let's break this down. First of all, we've got a straight edge on the left side. If 2.85 feet is what would be the diameter if that was a complete circle, then that left edge must be a radius or half of that 2.85 feet. So if we take 2.85 feet and divide it by 2, we get 1.425. And so that is the height of our straight edge on the left. Now that means the bottom must also be 1.425 feet. So we know that distance. Now what we have to figure out is how long the arc is on this circle. That is to say, an arc is any part of a circumference. So we don't have a full circle, but we have most of a full circle, and we can figure out how long that is. So if we had a full circle, we would say that that is pi 3.1416 times our diameter of 2.85 feet. But we don't have a whole circle. We're missing one-fourth of that circle, and so we're going to multiply that by three-fourths of a circle. And that is the length of our arc. Pi times diameter times the fraction of a uh, complete circumference we have. So 3.1416 times 2.85 times 3 divided by 4 you should get a value of 6.72 or 6.715 feet for the length of that arc. That's everything we need. We can now find the perimeter. And the perimeter is the arc plus the two straight edges. And when we add up the 6.715 feet plus our two straight edges of 1.425 each, we get 9.565. Now you may have noticed back here that uh, our diameter got broken in half to find these straight edges. We could have just added those together and left it as 2.85 as well. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, there's one problem I'd like you to do. This is an uh, air filter uh, off of my snowblower. It's kind of an unusual shaped air filter, and it makes for a good problem here. I'm giving you the dimensions. It's kind of, uh, the bottom half is kind of like a box, but the top half is a semicircle. So it's three and three quarter inches wide, and it's one and five eighths of an inch from the bottom up to where it starts to curve, only up to where it starts to curve. And I would like you to take a minute and figure out the perimeter of that filter. So pause the video, work that out. It's a little bit tricky. And unpause when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, here we go. First of all, we're just going to kind of think about this as being a rectangle with a semicircle sitting on the top. So we know that we've got three and three quarters on the bottom, one and five eighths on the right, and don't forget that this left edge must be one and five eighths as well. It's easy to forget sides that you know if they're not labeled. So in finding our perimeter, we can go all the way down the left side and across the bottom and up the right side. We know all those. What we have to do is we have to figure out the length of this arc on the top. So the length of this arc will be pi 3.1416 times its diameter, this distance across is 3 and 3 fourths, or 3.75, times the fraction of the circumference we have. This is exactly half a circle, so we're going to multiply that by 1 half. And that means the length of this arc around the top, the curved par portion, must turn out to be 5.89 inches. And we'll round that off to the nearest hundredth, like the instructions say. And that means that we're ready to calculate perimeter. So our perimeter then is going to be the distance all the way around. 
Now we do have fractions and decimals mixed here. Uh, it's typically easier to change everything into decimal form, so we'll do that. And if you add those together, you should get 12.89 inches. And we found our perimeter. Now, if you didn't get 12.89, one, did you forget to add on this left side? That's very common. Another common error is to take pi times 3 and 3 fourths, but forget to multiply it by half since we only have half a circle on the top of that curve. But if you didn't get that rewind, um, watch that process again so that one makes sense. You'll have a variety of problems like this in your practice problems for today. Okay, that wraps up our first topic in our uh, geometry section here. Go ahead and do those practice problems. And as always, be sure to give me a text or an email uh, or let me know if I can help you out with any of those practice problems that give you any trouble. Some of them are a little bit tricky, so don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we'll see you in our next lesson.